afternoon. Thanks for coming out. I'm Jerry Hall. I'm the board chair of the 2017 Pet Board. We're going to be really having an inspirational hour in front of us here. If you're a pet donor, thank you. Here's the results of your investment in our wonderful community. This year, we were able to grant 42 applications that will impact roughly 11,120 students. Thank you. So as I um, turn the, um, the presentation over to Tanya Jackson, she is the incoming board chair for 2017-18. Um, I'd like for all the board members to maybe come up for a second. Let's take a picture and uh, then we'll get started. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tanya Jackson. It's a delight to be here today. This is a wonderful occasion. We're giving away money. We're giving away grants to help you, to help our students, to help our future. So I'm really excited today. All right, we're going to get to our order of business, and I'd like to uh, introduce someone very special to the pet board. Uh, his bio is in your program, but I'd like to say Mr. Marion, who is here today to speak with us briefly, is the owner of Thornton Road uh, Hyundai. He is also the sponsor of today's reception. He also contributed funds for a classroom impact grant. He is also a former player for the New England Patriots, played in the Super Bowl XX. <laughs> So join me in welcoming Mr. Fred Marion. It's great to be here once again, and I will say good evening to everyone. Uh, you know, this, this day is about you all. You know, I'm just thankful that uh, we're blessed to have a small part uh, in this event. But uh, so it's not about taking from the community. It's about giving back to the community where you serve and earn your living, rightfully so, we should be able to give back to you all. And so thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Mary. We appreciate you being not only a part of our community, but active in our community, because truly it does take a village and it takes all of us business. Uh, our teachers, business leaders, our parents, our students, our government. It takes all of us to make Douglas County the best county uh, possible for each of us. So thank you so much for your participation and your commitment to PET and to the students of Douglas County. You are appreciated. And now I'd like to introduce someone. Come on down, Dr. Pritz. <laughs> We're glad to have him here to share a few words with us. Even though he is winding down on his tenure in service, he's still very active, and uh, indeed, we're appreciative of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good to be here. Um, I'm uh, rushing around a little bit tonight. I've got just came from uh, a retirement of my former secretary over in Marietta, so that made me feel old because I thought she was young, but. Uh, Thank you for uh, everybody being here tonight, uh, this evening, and um, a big thank you to, uh, appropriately, to the Pet Board and all that they do to support our school system, the efforts they make to uh, raise money and support us through uh, a variety of means, and this is obviously a very, very important one. So thank you, Pet Board and Foundation and everybody that's a part of that. And to uh, all the teachers that are here, thank you for your participation and your willingness to take a chance. Um, Seems like it might have paid off, 
So uh, just remember that each year after this that it's, uh, it's worth the risk. And we're excited to hear about the projects and the, uh, the use of uh, this gift. And we know that it's going to uh, produce uh, great things. So thank you all for being here. And thank you for allowing me to share this great uh, time with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fritz. Thank you for your leadership for Douglas County School Systems. Uh, uh, now, I'd like to call up one of our board members, uh, Marianne Dowlin. She's a longtime pet board member, multi-year board secretary, and she's going to come forward with a special presentation. It is my great privilege to recognize um, this year one of our friends of the foundation. These people go above and beyond to help uh, those of us on the pet board, and you will see why my friend is um, deserving of this recognition. recognition. Um, 75 traffic was bad today, sorry people. Um, <laughs> my friend is compassionate, caring, considerate, all the important things, and my friend has been dedicated to children and teachers and people in education for a long time. And my friend, sadly, will not be signing your paycheck very much longer. Dr. Fritz, would you come up and let us congratulate you on your retirement and recognize you. He is truly a friend of the pet board and he's my buddy and he's friends to everyone that knows him. Best Rumor. wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Marion, for that heartfelt congratulations. And Dr. Pritz, indeed, you are a friend of the foundation and the system as a whole. We have one more friend of the foundation we'd like to recognize, and I'm going to ask our board member, uh, Lynn Cole, our immediate past chair, to come forward and present that. This year, I would have the honor of presenting our um, Friend of the Foundation Award to a person who has really gone above and beyond for pet. About three years ago, we decided that we really needed some more help with our fun run. Our fun run um, had taken on a life of its own. It was growing. We were having lots of students participate. And it was more than most of us understood and, and knew what to do. So we reached out to this individual. And when we thought about you know, the running community in Douglas County, there's only one person that really comes to mind. And so we went to the best road runner we knew. And we asked him to give us some ideas, thoughts. What can we, you know, how can we make this better? Well, this individual pulled out laminated sheets with <laughs> constructed beautifully, um, meticulously drawn diagrams of what our race should and could look like. Then we went a step further and opened up the closet that had all of these bins perfectly labeled with exactly what we needed and where they needed to go and color coordination and <laughs> Um, the meeting that was supposed to last a half an hour was about two and a half hours long, um, and we enjoyed every moment of it. Not only did we get the upfront support and commitment from this individual, um, we also had a person who set up the entire race the night before. <laughs> so when the volunteers showed up on Saturday morning for the race, it was, it was pretty much done. Um, and over the last several years, um, this person has also just continued to be a leader in, um, in making sure our fun run goes off without a hitch. So without this person, we, we really wouldn't be able to pull it off the way that we do. One thing I'd like to share on a personal note, I've known this person for many years now, and he taught my children, doing your best is more important than being the best. And I could cry saying that because we've used that in our lives for many, many examples of things that just don't go right every time. Um, and the pet board is such an embodiment of, we're doing our best, folks, I promise you we are. And sometimes we, we're trying to be the best and um, our processes are difficult, they're challenging. We, we have to give out all these awards to so many deserving teachers and yet there were 77 awards and we only could give out 28, $77,000 worth of awards and we could only give out 28,500. So doing our best is what we always strive for, and this individual has you know, really embodied that in my life and taught all of us um, how important that is. And Butch Souls would love to recognize you this year as the friend of the foundation, and thank you for so much time and effort you've given to us this year.
Thank you so much, Lynn, and thank you, Butch, for your support and dedication to Ted. We are very, very appreciative for your support and for you doing your best for us. Thank you. And now, teachers, it's all about you, right? We're going to start with our first grant recipient from Arbor Station Elementary School. Our first grant is one of three funded uh, donations from Maple Farms Foundation. Now this foundation has been very generous through the years to Douglas County. The school system's own Dana Pace is part of Maple Farms Foundation. She's a gifted teacher who teaches gifted students in the gifted program. And uh, Ms. Pace, afterward, if you are here, we'd like you to go to the, uh, my right uh, to be a part of the photo that's taken after the uh, recipients receive their awards. Uh, for the Maple Farm Foundation Classroom Impact Grant, Christina and Carrie, would you please come forward? And we're asked that just one participant, a recipient, please speak. Hi, I'm Carrie Woodcomb, and this is Christina Glenn. And we did our grant for Dash and Dot robots um, that go along with Code.org. Last spring, we were introduced to coding through Code.org, and we just had a one-day training and came back to the school and just jumped right into it with the kids um, without even really knowing what we were doing, and they kind of helped us figure it out together. And it was such a big hit that we, it started out with just the PC kids doing it, and then it went to the enrichment kids, the talent development kids, the 21st century grant kids. And then uh, in December, we did the Hour of Code with the whole school. So all 600 and how many kids do we have? 30 kids did an Hour of Code the first week in December. And it was a huge hit. And now kids are coding all over our school and they're doing it at home and, um, and at school. And um, so we wanted to take it to the next level. So we tried the robots. We bought two sets, so we have four robots, and that's kind of hard to make work with 630 kids, so, um, and we only have, what, two iPads, so, so um, we, we gotta work on that next. So um, anyway, um, so it, it's, if you haven't seen kids doing coding before, it's amazing the higher order thinking that's involved, and um, now they get to do it with these robots, they get to, they have to code them to make them move, to make them talk, dance, play in, play a xylophone, all different things that they can do. So um, we're just getting started with it. We're hoping that having the extra eight robots will really help, and um, we'll see what we're going to be able to do. We're excited. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll call up Susan and Charity with the Wobble Chair Project. Hello, I'm Susan Walker, and this is Charity Wilson, and um, Charity brought to my attention that it was her desire to incorporate more flexible seating into our special education classes. And so she had already done some research and came up with the wobble chair. And we share a lot of students who tend to um, tip their chairs dangerously and they just can't seem to sit still. Um, so we did some research and we figured out that these chairs actually allow for flexible seating, um, allow for vestibular movement to help them with their thinking skills and listening skills. And so we put forward our grant and we thank you very much because we hope that with this, this is the beginning of more flexible seating where maybe they can do some kneeling what are they called, kneeling pads, um, and things like that, that we can grow on and see how it works in our school. So, we thank you. All right, now we have a large group right here for the Stability Balls, uh, Lisa, Thomas, Pam, Archella, and Kate. And please don't forget to go to the rear and take your photos, please. <laughs> I'm Pam Cooper. This is Ms. Charlotte Dayall and Thomas Bruno. Uh, we have a few friends in our classes who like the wobble chair. They have a difficult time kind of sitting still and focusing um, and 
in uh, chairs. So what we're planning on doing is replacing those chairs with stability balls so hopefully we can reorganize or refocus their concentration so they can focus more on their work. So thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. We're, we're excited to see how it works. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Melanie, wonderful writers. Woo. Oh, please, everyone, please go to take your pictures to the right, my right. Good afternoon. Um, first, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm very grateful for the Classroom Impact Grant. And my project at its core is um, a project designed to cultivate a genuine love and desire for writing at an early age um, and just to help the students uh, develop skills that will help them um, at a young age but in the years to come to make it something that is natural, um, a part of their everyday life and something that they truly, truly um, enjoy to do. Katie and Butch Souls, Building Blocks of Knowledge in Art and PE. Good afternoon. We are getting some big wooden blocks and we'll be able to roll them into the gym when we get together. And the kids love to build and it's so good for them. And we're constantly reading about how important play is. So we're going to build cities and buildings and we're gonna get together and have fun in the gym building stuff. Right. Thanks. Our last one representing Arbor Station is Thomas Bruno from Mr. Bruno's Crew. Yeah, well, last year I started a, a group of students. Uh, they were having a little trouble with some bus issues and. I didn't know what quite what to do with them, but I started a book club. So I go around every morning and I gather the students. I start off in kindergarten and I pick up the kids in kindergarten. They just love following me around. So I go to first grade and they know who they are. They come running out. So we started last year. We had about five, six students that started. Now I'm up around 40 kids that are in this, this crew. So I buy them books with this grant and I really appreciate Grant. We got a corner of the media center. It's Mr. Bruno's crew. Miss Joe made me take my stand up Abraham Lincoln and put him in there. He, he was in my office, but she was getting, she made me move him. And I put Mardi Gras beads around him, and he's got a Saints cap on or something. It's a, it's really helping the kids. A lot of the kids are the, they they're top readers in their class. I mean, so they went from having zero points, and some of them have 50 AR points. We got about four or five hundred books set aside. I buy books that they really enjoy. And this year I'm taking some of them out to Kennesaw Mountain. We actually got a Target field trip grant. So we're going out there this year. And thank you very much. Very exciting, excellent news for our uh, students, for sure. Our next honorees come from Beulah Elementary School, and this grant is funded by Fred Marion and Thornton Road Hyundai. Uh, Mr. Marion, please be sure to head back to take a photo with this uh, wonderful group. The first group of Soaring Science Scholars, Heather, Alicia, and Emily. My teammates all had family um, functions, so I got lucky. Um, but thank you very much. Um, we teach fifth grade, and one of the first units we teach is cells. And without microscopes, you can't study cells. And so this grant is allowing us to go from one microscope for 71 kids to 30 microscopes and slides. So thank you very much. honorees are travelers, world travelers, Sarah, Vivian, Canela, Ma, and Tracy. <laughs> Thank you everybody. I'm Tracy Moore and I help coordinate the dual language program at Beulah Elementary and as you know we do things in two languages so we're going to break the rules a little and have two of us speak. 
my teammates are here that are actually fantástico. They're teachers of Spanish. I'll let them introduce themselves very quickly. Hola, soy Kenel Magist. Enseño tercer grado. Hola, soy Señora Brownlow y yo soy la maestra para segundo grado. Hola, soy Vivian Chai y enseño cuarto grado. So the grant we wrote was to get some extra reading materials to help support culture. That is something that we try to inject into our daily math and uh, reading that is taught in Spanish. And it's taught to both native Spanish speakers and native English speakers. So everyone that's in the dual language program gets a second language, both, you know, and they do their content in Spanish. It's not an extra language class, it's just everyday schooling. So these books will help us with the culture, and now I'm going to give you a little immersive experience with Senora Guest. So listen carefully. Oh. Repiten, por favor. Libro. 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 Muchos libros. Muchos libros. Oh, muy bien. Gracias, muchísimas gracias a Pet por muchos libros por, para nuestras o nuestras estudiantes. Gracias. All I know how to say is excelente. <laughs> That was great. Oh, wow. All right, hold it. Hold on hands. Hands-on learning demonstrated, Vivian and Casey. Hi again, I'm Vivian Chai. This is Casey Coker. We teach fourth grade, and we want to thank you for our pet grant. We want to thank the board and everyone else. Uh, we're actually getting um, hands-on um, kits, like STEM kits to work with our kids, and because I teach uh, science in Spanish, Casey does it in English, we are going to be able to use these materials for children to express what they're learning in both languages. Thanks again. And the last for Beulah is Tyler, with the pedometer challenge. Me again, excepting for Coach Hubbard, who's going to be devastated he was not here to meet Mr. Marion. But he, we have soccer camp at Beulah this week for kindergarten, first and second. He can't miss. So he wanted to, me to extend his many, many thanks for the pedometer challenge. And I thank you too, because we're all charged with wearing pedometers now, you know, in the Fitbit craze. He wants to get the kids moving and being aware of their of tracking their health. So it's going to be a school-wide challenge with pedometers and graphs and interpreting those graphs, and we're just very thankful for that opportunity. Thank you again. Uh, Bill Arp Elementary School, Brandy, Architect 3D Design in the Art Room. I love how all of our art teachers have flowers in their hair. <laughs> art teacher today. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, as an art teacher, we get to serve all of the students, which I love. It's hard to learn all their names with 700 kids, but we're getting there. Um, I do, in my classroom, I'll, I'll teach a little bit differently. I don't teach uh, teacher-centered lessons. I teach student-centered. So the kids are actually charged with designing their own projects. They have to plan it. They have to decide what materials they're using, what steps they're going to take. They have to problem solve along the way. Um, it's called Choice-Based Studio. It is, um, I, I will never go back to Teacher Centered. It's amazing what these kids can do. So many more things than, than I ever imagined. But um, we're a STEM school, and so um, science, technology, engineering, math is very, very important. We try to work that into every single, um, every single classroom, and so art room included. And um, architecture is a really good way to turn STEM to STEAM. And so with the Kiva blocks, I've applied for, um, they're called Kiva planks, and they're wooden blocks, which in essence sounds like a very simple thing. But in today's age of um, testing, stakes are going up, and you know the rigor is going up, and the standards are going up, and play is going down, and you know the, that time that the kids have to just discover is simply going away. And um, with elementary school kids, they really need to understand spatial awareness. 
and with small children especially, you need, they need to understand how the world is built around them and how to do that. And so these are simple blocks, and they're all the same size and shape, which, which sounds kind of boring, but they come with these amazing books that have architectural elements in it. So they're learning about load, and they're learning about all of these things that they will apply later. And so it helps them in their science. It helps them with, with all of the things that they need to do. And I, I can't wait to use them. My kids are going to be so excited. So thank you so much. Don't forget to take your picture, Brandy. All right, Burnett Elementary School, Maple Farms Foundation Classroom Impact Grant, Tammy and Rosalore. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. We are just overwhelmed by the generosity of the pet grant. Um, our kids, we came up with this idea over the summer last year. I was just like, let's do something with them because our kids are wiggly and they, they seem to give up on themselves before they get started. And I think that's from them not having experience um, just doing things on their own. And so the STEM club really allows them to just build and we, are, we have been using trash, <laughs> water <laughs> bottles, um, paper towel tubes, so, so on and so forth. We call them our treasures, but really they're building from nothing. And watching them in the past couple of months, taking a paper towel tube and some string and building a pulley, and they're just so proud. And so this grant it will allow us to purchase some kits that they can actually build and see how a robot works how to code. Um, I forgot what else we're going to purchase because give me what I wrote. But um, all of the items that will be purchased that will purchase will help them to have a more fulfilling experience and actually get to understand how to solve some of these real world problems because I think they don't understand like you can be an engineer, you know, you can you can do these things and it starts so small and now to watch them they're just so much more um, confident and they know what they can do, rather than me saying, guys, I just put it out there with a picture sometimes and they just go to it and the things that they come up with is amazing. And they're learning how to work together and how to you know, uh, communicate <laughs> because we have a lot of our friends who don't know um, how to ask please and let me share that with you and take turns and so, this STEM club has been so much more than we thought I think it was going to be. And so thank you so much. We are so grateful for your generous donation. And um, we're grateful. Yes, we are. Thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Our next school is Chapel Hill Elementary School. Lindsay, Alicia, Greta, Stacy, Rebecca, Don, the Little Free Library. Come on down. Hey, I'm Rebecca Sparling, and this is Stacy Mallory. We're from Chapel Hill Elementary. We decided to address the subject of summer slippage, which is where a lot of times over the summer the children will lose some of the gains that they've made during the year. And specifically, we decided to address the slippage in reading. We were surprised when we found out how many of our students either have no books in the home or very, very few books in the home, and also how few of our students ever go to the public library. So what we've decided to do is erect little free libraries in some of the neighborhoods in our school district, and we will stock them with books and go throughout the summer to check on them and see if any of them have disappeared. We need to restock them and just keep those full of books all summer long. Right. So hopefully they can, um, that will give them mo more exposure to reading and access to books during the summer so that at the very least they will not lose the gains they've made during the year and hopefully at the most they will actually grow over the summer. So thank you so, so very much for supporting us. We, we just appreciate you supporting our students, our teachers, and the whole educational community. So thank you. <laughs> Our next school is Dorset Shoals Elementary School, another uh, recipient for the Maple Farms Foundation Classroom Impact Grant, Tammy, visual art trip around the world. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tammy. I'm sorry, oh, I, didn't, you? I didn't have a flower in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, thank you so much. Thank you to the Pet Board, and thank you so much particularly to Maple Farms Foundation. Um, we appreciate 
the grant for our visual art trip around the world. Our school is going to have a um, school-wide theme of a trip around the world. So in art, we're going to visit seven continents, and we're going to do artwork that's representative of those continents. So thank you so much. Next, uh, Nick, Stephanie, and Tracy, Growing Positive with Reading. Hi, on behalf of first grade teacher Stephanie Johnson and our assistant principal Nick, Ep Nick Epstein, the three of us wrote this grant. And what it does is it is a school-wide initiative that marries our positive behavior program, focusing on positive characteristics and choices students make every day, being dependable and so forth. We're buying books with those themes so students can not only grow as readers, but then also reinforce our positive behavior school-wide initiative. So we are incredibly excited about that. We thank the Pet Board for all your energy, time, and dedication for what you do for our communities and our students in um, Dorset Shoals and Douglas County. Thank you. Uh, next, Jennifer and Tracy, hands on STEAM. You can see STEAM is a positive um, theme for many of these projects. And when we invited the public library STEAM engine to come to our school and bring robotic kits and circuitry kits and ozobots and all kinds of coding elements. Our students were so excited and engaged with hands-on learning, communicating, cooperating, using higher order thinking skills. It was incredible. So to have a grant where we could get some of those materials available to all of our students throughout our school any day is um, really a true gift. Thank you. Rick with Music Class Instruments. Thank you, uh, members of the PET uh, Board, for um, awarding us this uh, wonderful opportunity because uh, purchasing these instruments for the students not only gives them a chance to have hands-on experience being able to read and write their own music, but it gives them a chance to the performance being able to come out of their shell for the students that are a little more shy, more reserved, like I was um, at, at this age, um, it gives them a chance to build the self-esteem and have that opportunity to show off for a moment. So this will not only um, help every student in the school, but will also extend it to our 21st century grant in the afternoon. And we just cannot thank you enough to allow um, us the opportunity to be able to do this for our students. Thank you. And next, Cindy and Tracy again uh, with Light Up Learning with Lightbox. On behalf of Cindy Ippetson, a kindergarten teacher, and myself, um, thank you very much for this Lightbox grant. And Lightbox is actually a digital resource that will be available through our school library. Students can also access it at home. But it's awesome because it's a very safe, interactive, and engaging um, online, uh, kind of like an electric um, Pinterest kind of board or digital bulletin board. And so we've got different resources um, with Lightbox for all the different research projects even kindergarten, first, second, and up can use to learn more facts about our government, animals, and so forth. So it's really engaging research tools. Thank you so much. As you can see, the Dorset Shows completed a lot of applications for the PET grants. Our next school is Eastside Elementary, one of our next grants is funded by RK Reading Construction. Do we have any representatives from RKR? All right, Sally Reese, STEM Kindergarten Centers, come on. Okay. I'm Sally Reese and this is Liz Pryor and we work as a kindergarten team at Eastside along with a couple other teachers and we are excited about um, getting STEM activities in the kindergartner's hands. So thank you so much for this grant for us to be able to buy some center-based 
STEM activities for our kids so that they can build a foundation so as they go through school they'll, they'll get um, a better impact of what STEM is and, as they grow. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next school is Holly Springs Elementary Carry Makerspace Magic. Good afternoon, I'm the media specialist at Holly Springs Elementary and I wanna thank everybody on the pet board for um, giving us this opportunity to incorporate a maker space into our media center. Um, with our daily flow and activities going on in the media center, we'll be able to provide um, ways for children to um, develop their creativity skills while incorporating problem solving skills by building, creating, tinkering um, throughout the day. And so um, we'll be able to purchase some materials and a place to house the materials and um, also later on down the road incorporate some STEM things as well into our maker space with our kids so thank you very much. Uh, next is Leap Special Needs Preschool Beth. Her program is Talk To Me. Hey, I'm a speech pathologist and one of the evaluators with Special Needs Preschool and I just thank you so much on behalf of the children who enter my office um, on a daily basis who have very limited or no language skills whatsoever. Um, I'll be able to print off symbols and give the parents strategies of things that they can leave the office with that day to teach their children just the basic um, ability to express their wants and needs at home. So um, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Our next school is Mason Creek Elementary School. The first grant is funded by our very own President Jerry Hall, owner of Assured Comfort Heating and Air and Plumbing. Our first recipient is Sarah, fifth grade, get electrified. This was an interesting grant to read, I promise you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm the um, STEM teacher at Mason Creek, so I teach kindergarten through fifth grade um, different STEM activities. And um, I noticed with fifth grade, with making the electric circuits, we have lots of wires and um, batteries and light bulbs and stuff, but it was very hard for the students to make circuits with them. So um, I applied for the grant to get special electric uh, circuit kits to help them. So thank you for that. <laughs> Oh, you got another one? Yeah. Oh, you sure do. All right. That's good. Come on. Uh, Owl Pellet Food Web Project. Now, this is interesting as well. Okay, I feel so fortunate because I took two chances um, this year and uh, was granted two grants, but there's several other teachers I noticed that did the same thing. So, with fourth grade, um, with the ecosystems unit, um, I like to do owl pellets because it really, it's a great phenomena to get their attention. And, um, and you wouldn't think owl pellets are very expensive, but they really do um, add up very quickly. So um, this grant was to get um, owl pellets for our fourth grade students. So thank you again. Uh, yes. Uh, Amanda, hot dot cards for first grade. <laughs> I'm just going to keep accepting. <laughs> um, okay, Amanda has a very sick child at home, um, but she wanted to, she's very appreciative and wanted to thank, thank the pet board for this, and it's going to help her with um, interactive centers for first grade. Yeah, that's it. Next school is uh, New Manchester Elementary School, also a recipient of Assured Comfort Heating, Air, and Plumbing Classroom Impact Grant. Whitney and Kayla, my big special needs pre-K world. Um, thank you guys so much. It's a magazine that um, also has an online resource where um, science and social studies concepts um, are brought to life and they're more on their level because that's a very abstract concept, especially for our babies with disabilities. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Assured Comfort Heating and Air, and thank you, Pat.
Our next recipient is South Douglas Elementary School, Liliana, Michelle, and Katie, STEM Science Club Resources. Hello, uh, my name is Liliana Borges. I'm representing the whole school because right now uh, we have a STEM science night at school and uh, we're expecting about 200, 250 kids. So this is what the, uh, the PET grant is for. So I'm very thankful for that. Thank you very much. Oh, we got one more? Okay. All right, next Liliana, Christina, Molly, and Lynn, Georgia, my state biographies. Again, they're waiting for me to come back, but <laughs> I'm busy right now. Um, <laughs> what we're doing uh, with this, um, this is actually for second grade, and I teach second grade. Um, we, it's very hard to find nonfiction materials for the kids on their level. So when we saw this and we saw the price, we were like, oh, okay. Um, so somebody said, you know, why don't you apply for a grant? And we tried and we got it and we're very, very thankful because we're super excited about this. I know the kids are gonna love it. Thank you. Uh, next, we're almost there, Sweetwater Elementary School. Uh, we have a nice roster here, Christopher, Rochelle, Courtney, Jacqueline. Taiwana, Shakita, Tamika, William, Tanya, Sally. No, just kidding. <laughs> Story time science. <laughs> She's like, now who are they? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Good evening. I feel like I won the Academy Award because I have my speech here. Um, it's just a pleasure and a privilege to stand before you. I represent um, Tamika Scott, who's our instructional lead teacher, and our second through fifth grade teachers. Anytime you give money to students is an Academy Award. I'm um, just very blessed to stand before you. Our students, this grant basically will let our students go from wow to I wonder if and let them expand deeper into the science um, background. Um, our students will build a strong background to keep, us, keep up in the fast moving global society. This grant allows us to combine the new Georgia standards of excellent science standards with literature or hands on inquiry based STEM infused science-based instructions using the biological sciences curriculum study 5E instructional model. This learning model allows students to construct their own understanding of scientific concepts as they cycle through the following phases, engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluation. So on behalf of Sweetwater Elementary School and our second through fifth grade teachers, administration staff, and our students, we'd like to thank you so very much. And good evening. Now that was an Oscar. <laughs> All right, our next school is Winston Elementary School, another recipient of a short comfort heating, air and plumbing classroom impact grant. Natalie, expanding expression tool. Good afternoon, um, I'm Natalie Avery. I'm the speech pathologist at Winston Elementary and I work daily with kids that struggle with language skills. Um, they're not orally able to express themselves and um, that carries over to the writing, so I'm very excited and thankful that um, I was awarded this money to purchase the Expanding Expression Tool, because it's going to provide me a more systematic way of instructing the students to build on those language skills that they need you know, for the rigor of the classroom today. I've struggled for years trying to find that balance of how to teach them the appropriate language tools that they need to carry over into that rigor, because you know, they don't have a lot of the prerequisite language skills that they need. So I'm excited to um, get started with it and hopefully carry that over to even what they're doing into the classroom as well. So I just want to say thank you. Uh, next is Chestnut Log Middle School, Michelle Sims Middle School, Makerspace. If you can dream it, you can build it. Hi everyone, congratulations. This is, a, um, this is a neat experience for me. I have to say um, thank you to the pet board. Um, as an administrator, I wrote this grant for my kids. Um, and, and I'm not gonna take the credit because my kids really deserve the credit because these are the kids that come to see me all the time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and so I have a drawer in my office 
and it's at the bottom of the drawer, and, and it has, it's full of stuff. I mean, I call it crap. They call it, oh, this is cool. <laughs> and so and then I have a bookcase just full of all kinds of stuff. So what I was noticing is I had more and more kids coming to see me every day. And I'm like, okay, but you don't need to be coming to see me, but you have all this cool stuff. And I'm like, okay, so I got 15 kids together, and we sat down in the media center one day, and I was like, look, guys, we have an opportunity to write a grant. Now, I know this grant is for teachers, but you know what? I'm just going to slide it in there, and maybe they won't notice. I said, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to do it together. You tell me what you want to make this school better, and we're going to write it up, and we're going to submit it, and we're all going to cross our fingers. So we sat down together. And I had some kids who loved Legos, so I had a little baggie of Legos in my office. I had another kid who likes duct tape. So we have a little duct tape group. We make different wallets and flowers and all kinds. And I even had to put a flower in my hair, and I'm not a flower girl. Um, you know, and then, I mean, we just started, we have kids that make apps, and these are kids that are always in trouble. And I'm like, okay, so if I can take the kids who are always in trouble, and we can make a bigger space for them, which we've done in the media center. We're going to make a space for them, and we're going to incorporate some of these other kids into it, and they're going to start working together, and we're going to make this happen. Because no matter what, we want everybody to be successful. So from now on, what the kids do is no discipline. You get to come see me more often because everybody likes to play. So my makerspace little areas is all about dreaming and building. So we've got tons and tons of duct tape, because everybody likes duct tape, because it's the best thing for everything. And then we're making a Lego wall. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, but kids love Legos. That's like the biggest thing right now. So the Lego wall, it actually goes on the wall. It's about six by six. So if you're looking at me, I'm six feet. I'm not six feet wide. <laughs> but you can, you, can, you can make whatever, and it's all 3D. So, you know, the, the tall kids can work together with the smaller kids, and it, everybody just fits into a, a perfect space. And then we're making robots that you can, we're actually going to race them, and we're going to do it, um, I haven't told my principal yet, so you guys cannot tell her. <laughs> um, but we're going to do it down each hallway, because, and we're going to have girls versus girls, guys versus girls, and you make the robot, and it's all controlled on an app. Everybody in middle school nowadays has a phone. Well, if they don't have it, then they can use my phone. But they have to make it. They have to code it. They have to make the app to make the robot work. And as soon as they're done, they take it apart, and then the next group can do it. So you can use it over and over and over again. And so once everybody starts doing it, everybody's going to want the crazy robot thing. But it's really neat. So if you guys ever want to come, and cause I'm all about competition, and I'm all about having fun, and I'm all about moving, and because as you can see, I'm still moving. But my kids move, and when my kids move, my kids are learning. They're learning, and so that that's that was our, our that was our premises for our, our grant. So we really appreciate it um, at Chestnut Lodge Middle School, and thank you guys. Move that way. Excellent. Excellent. All right, we are winding down for Play Middle School. Get ready to come on down, Sylvia, Heather, and Shannon, reintroducing the classics and Shakespeare in the middle school. Hi, I'm Sylvia Bailey, and um, on behalf of the reading department at Fair Play Middle School, I want to really thank you. This is just tremendous. Um, I'm very passionate about reading. I've always been an avid reader, and I have a hard time when the kids aren't excited about reading. And so we were trying to, I was brainstorming one day, just trying to think of what to do to help. And um, th because I can't get them to read the classic novels or Shakespeare or anything like that, they're, they're not interested in that. It's too much, too involved. And I discovered the graphic novels that they're also crazy about also come in classics and Shakespeare. And so we're buying graphic novels to help introduce the kids to some of these great characters that we grew up with. And hopefully they will, you know, find the love for reading like we do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Noel, uh, Darby, Leslie, Jordan, and Robert. A crazy traits, a genetic. I'm 
Noelle Belaski here on behalf of the seventh grade um, science and math departments. Every year when I ask my seventh graders and even my eighth graders what their favorite unit was of all year and what they enjoyed the most and what they wanted more of, they said genetics year after year after year. And through some research, I found Crazy Trace, a genetics and heredity inquiry module. It's all inclusive, all the materials are involved, are there. Um, it's non-consumable, so it can be used for many, many, many years. It'll impact about 150 plus seventh graders every year at Fair Play. I'm hoping to get many years so we can possibly get thousands of kids across our county impacted by this grant. Um, it's differentiated. There is something for everybody from our special ed kids straight up through the gifted classes are involved in this it's inquiry based so they're answering the question and they're discovering as they answer their question and it's not just figuring out you know is this going to lead to like the her like um her, her laws of inheritance for brown eyes, blue eyes, et cetera, but it also goes into the structure and function of DNA and then cellular processes that they find very, that are on such a small level that they have a hard time understanding them like meiosis and mitosis. It brings them to a larger scale so that they can understand how these processes work and why they're important to them. Um, it also encompasses, of course, a lot of probability because a lot of genetics is based upon probability. So we'll be able to encompass more and more math into our science classrooms. But we thank you very, very much for funding this for us. We are truly, truly grateful. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Mason Creek Middle School, Adam, Suzanne, and Wendy, sensory space. We have four more. <laughs> Madam Bailey, this is Suzanne Butler and Wendy Osborne, and we're self-contained teachers at Mason Creek Middle School. Uh, we work with a variety of individuals with exceptionalities, and one of the things we wanted to provide was a very safe environment for them to be able to explore and also allow them to help reduce anxiety that they might get, um, especially within the middle school environment, uh, while also allowing them those inclusive opportunities. And so we wanted to create a sensory space for our students, but also um, a sensory space that would be available for students that are served in the general ed population that may have test anxiety and things like that so that they may also be able to to use the space so we'd like to thank the, the pet grant uh, community and board for uh, believing in what we want to do and supporting us excellent uh, chapel hill high school kimberly Lydia and Sandy, creamy and choking babies. Hi, I'm Lydia Blakey. I teach at Chapel Hill High School, and I represent our whole department because right now at Chapel Hill High School, we're having the Freshman Expo. So all the fresh, all the um, eighth graders are coming over to look at um, our classrooms. They're coming over to look at my classroom. So I have people holding down the fort while I'm here. So I am so excited. I want to thank you because this grant um, is going to impact 700 plus students. I teach early child education, so I teach one, two, and the third level. So those students um, carry home the electronic babies. They learn all about the brain and. Also, this grant will impact the health occupational students and the food science students. Choking Baby and Preemie Baby, we're so passionate about this and so thankful about this because we believe that this grant is going to help save lives. We actually believe that we're going to be able to save some Preemie Babies and um, the threat of a baby choking. These students are going to learn exactly what to do because they're going to have an actual baby model that actually is going to choke and, and will let them know if they're doing it right or wrong. So this, this is, I'm just so excited. I want to thank the, um, the, the, the grant committee, I want to thank Pet Grant for allowing us to get this grant because this grant, we believe, is going to change lives. Tina, Christina, Gloria, Susan, and Steve Des and Dictionaries. Come on, Lydia. 
I also represent Chapel Hill High School again. All of those um, people are at their in their classroom, but the foreign language department wanted me to thank you because do you realize there's some students um, at Chapel Hill High School, our classes are 90 minutes long. Do you know that there's some students who have trouble sitting for 90 minutes? How many adults? Raise your hand, wait a minute. Okay, we have wigglers in here, okay. <laughs> but anyway, these, there are special desks that these students can stand for 90 minutes instead of sitting and still um, get the education that they need. And also with this grant, the Foreign Language Department wanted me to thank you that now they did not have dictionaries with hard covers. They had the softback that tear up, um, and these students now, um, with the foreign language, it is not an elective anymore, but they need to have foreign language to go to a college. You have to have two years of foreign language. You also, it also makes them more marketable for this global community. Thank you so much. All right, Douglas County High School. Uh, next uh, recipient, uh, writer, will receive two grants. Uh, Christy, Connecting Teens to Multicultural Literature and Making the Media Center a Marker Space. Thank you very much for um, allowing the high schools to share in the re being a recipient for this. I know a lot of times, you know, elementary schools, you guys are getting out there and hustling to get everything you, you need. Um, but we really appreciate being included in this as well. The, the first one that I want to talk about is the multicultural lit. Uh, in this day and age, you know, think back to when you were in high school. If you were given a choice to read Chaucer and Shakespeare and then given a choice to read more current modern fiction that is relevant to a more multicultural society that you are living in and it involves characters that could be your best friend or the person sitting beside you, which one would you choose? That's what our kids are choosing. They're choosing multicultural lit now because they can take that instead of taking British literature as a graduation requirement. Unfortunately, there's not really a textbook for that. So um, I wrote this grant for the English department to be able to get class sets of four different types of books that cover different cultures so that they can have that current relative connection to the literature. Um, the second one is for the makerspace. You've heard several people mention that. That's a big popular thing to do right now. Um, high school kids like to play too. Sometimes we think that they're grown and adults. They're not. <laughs> they're not. And sometimes they need more coddling and attention than even some toddlers do. So this is a way for them to come in and collaborate with, e with each other. We always like to say that we're not your traditional library because we are not quiet at all. So the kids come in. We've put out some crafts and different things already. I was like, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do this. Oh my gosh, it's like crazy time. When can we, when can we work on it again? So we're, we're getting some Legos, we're getting a sewing machine. Um, the kids just, they love it because they can be creative, they can collaborate with each other, and they're learning from each other outside that pressure of being in a classroom and oh, I have to learn this science thing. You're learning science, you just don't even realize you're learning science. So this is going to really make a big difference for our students, so thank you. Uh, Douglas County Performance Learning Center. Uh, this grant, grant is funded by my very own company, Raylan, uh, Amerilis Learning Life Skills Through Hands-On Science. No, my recipient is not here. Well. Yes, they're gonna get it. Uh, New Manchester High School, last but certainly not least, Kiana, World Step into Success. No? Uh, let's give all of our 2017-2018 Classroom Impact Grant recipients a hand clap. Thank you so very much for your uh, patience. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Sherry McKinley, uh, our pet board member. Mm -hmm.